So I want to talk, um, uh, there's about five slides, and what I try to do is, uh, on the, the first introduction, I'm going to talk a bit about, you know, the, the power sector is going, uh, a lot of transformation has obviously happened, and, and through that process, more disruption has happened, and, and what the effect of that was. And then talking about, um, you know, what that means regarding being a bit more flexible in the space um, because of the disruption that happens. But it's not just generation that should be flexible. It's other things that should be flexible as well. And then talk a bit about what the IFC has done in this, in this space. Uh, uh, you know, not just in, 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 because we work all over emerging markets. So there's a lot of countries that are sitting with the same problems that Africa is sitting with and have solutions and have tried. And, and, and some of those lessons we can learn. Uh, and then talk about some of the, the challenges we're facing in some of those movements we've did and, and, and projects we financed. And then talk just for a few seconds on, on what we are concentrating going forward. So um, this slide, I think what he wants to say is that the power sector is undergoing uh, you know, transformation and it's driven by technological and market disruptions. Um, its power sector is moving away from fossil fuels towards renewables, which is now adding um, more megawatts than any other technology at a, at a cheaper cost. Battery storage is being mainstreamed, the transport sector is under, undergoing electrification, and, um, and uh, the, the traditional centralized grid is becoming more decentralized, thereby transforming how electricity will be delivered and used. Distributed power generation, especially hybrid PV plus storage systems, smart energy, uh, efficient microgrids and off-grid lightning products are creating opportunities to reach populations that are currently unserved or underserved. Renewable energy is, is obviously what is driving us as a development institution uh, is also part of this. And, 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 and these changes can re significantly reduce CO2. Um, until the 1980s, uh, the power sector in most countries were vertically integrated. Uh, publicly owned utilities owned generation, transmission, and distribution, as is the case, current model with ESCOM. In search of kind of greater efficiency and cost effectiveness, vertically integrated, integrated utilities were privatized and unbundled into separate generation, transmission, and distribution assets, and privately owned independent power producers that could sell electricity to the utilities were introduced. The unbundling of the power sector had led to higher investment, increased efficiency, and reduced losses, and lower electricity prices due to competitive wholesale markets. So this happened in the 2000s, and with governments pushing this and new technology coming onto line, and this cost of, of, of electricity came, came down, as you all know. And um, in line with that, um, we as IFC have also started looking at technology to improve um, LNG trade, which with ad additional capacity coming on stream provided emerging market, mark, markets access to cost low carbon energy options, which I will talk about a bit later. So, so basically what, what has happened now is that um, the, the second phase of the disruption that, that's according to the notes from the IFC says around 2012 to 2014, uh, the, the decline of the renewable costs um, came down that it's very much the same as grid parity. Um, and this is creating a kind of a, a perfect storm. Um, so today we find ourselves uh, in, in this disruption where de decentralization, especially through distributed power generation, rooftop, solar PV, microgrids, off-grid lightning products, digitalization, and the evolution of power market design is changing the market as we know this. Um, beyond the continued decline of the renewable prices, the increase in adoption of uh, the competitive procurement mechanisms uh, of renewable financing, new innovations are changing this, the, the power landscape. But that created this change in generation flexibility, but it also does not just change the, the flexibility for generation, but also transmission uh, and distribution 
flexible demand, uh, as well as flexible business models to be able to go forward. The flexibility that is now being created by all this disruption um, can have significant benefits for emerging markets, making energy cheaper, more accessible and more reliable and less carbon intensive. They also open opportunities for poorer countries, especially in sub-Saharan Africa and also India, to leapfrog into a connected energy world. Finally, they will help displace coal in the developing world as the energy source of choice. The flexibility in generation transmission, demand and business model, I, I want to discuss a bit more because this can, I think, create a new paradigm for base loadism. So let's discuss individually the flexibility that is being created by these disruptive technologies, um, as I've stated. So in parallel, as I mentioned before, uh, to the rise of renewables, but less subject to the spotlight, a shift in natural gas market occurred through innovation in the liquefied natural gas trade. LNG has become more accessible to emerging markets through the recent decrease in oil prices, new LNG production capacity, and the advent of floating LNG import terminals, the, the so-called floating storage and regasification units. These factors have turned natural gas power generation into a cost-effective, low-carbon energy option for markets without domestic gas resources and an ideal complement to intermittent renewables. Floating LNG import terminals offer new access to gas. The advent of SRUs has meant that emerging markets now have much lower cost infrastructure option than has previously been available. Because the floating component can be leased, and we're doing that as I've seen Bangladesh now, as well as other places, uh, the capital mobilization challenges are, are much lower. With access to growing global gas markets, developing countries can confidently choose gas as a fuel to complement renewables. Gas is a key transition fuel until batteries can compete in terms of price, storage capacity, and rapid ramp up needs. While in most markets it should be possible to avoid building new coal plants, given current technology, it will not be possible to totally avoid building new thermal capacity. Natural gas constitutes a low carbon baseload alternative to coal and oil, and provides flexibility, fast ramping capacity to complement intermittent renewables energy sources and aid in the integration of renewables into the grid. IFC recognizes the need to accelerate development of LNG to power infrastructure so that clients have natural gas as a realistic fuel option in the future. IFC can focus on increasing the penetration of renewables and consciously help specific markets lower the carbon intensity of their power sector. Over time, a more cheaper renewable energy and energy storage options evolve. The objective will be obviously to minimize the utilization of thermal capacity and move progressively to grid as close to zero carbon as possible. So the IFC has financed the AES Colin uh, LNG to power project in Panama. It consists of about 380 megawatts of combined cycle gas fired power plant and an onshore LNG import terminal. And it's also financing two similar LNG power projects in Brazil. IFC is also uh, finance a standalone uh, project in Asia to import LNG. Um, it's also uh, recently partnered with Transnet um, to develop the LNG terminal in South Africa, where someone told me this morning that that's not the place where the LNG is going to come from, but at least we're helping to try and see if that's a possibility. So the next, uh, except for generation that that is flexible, uh, you also need to be able to have uh, storage and, and uh, flexible grid storage would become an important tool for maximizing grid flexibility to integrate renewables into the grid, making solar and, and base load generation more easily dispatchable. Um, this is again important in emerging markets uh, that do not have the same grid sophistication as, as the developed markets. Battery storage is starting to become economically viable for some applications and price declines are expected to continue while efficiency improves. Solar wind plus storage systems are a game changer for, for three reasons. 
First, as the penetration of renewables on the grid increases, co-locating PV wind and storage can greatly increase the value of solar and wind by extending the electricity it supplies into peak evening hours, especially for solar. Second, combining renewables with storage can make renewable power dispatchable and also displace gas and coal as baseload. And third, it can provide reliable power off-grid to communities and uh, industrial clients and consumers, such as miners. Um, other storage technologies, and I don't want to go into all of that, but there's obviously a lot of uh, development happening. And IFC is actively working in creating markets as well in, in the storage space. For example, by expanding uh, scaling solar packages to offer the option of co-locating storage IFC is also supporting development of new markets in storage, plus solar package product offerings for residential and smaller commercial and industrial markets, currently dependent on unreliable electric grids and diesel fuel generators. In this, the World Bank um, collaboration is really needed. So we support the private sector, the World Bank supports government. But in the bio sector, that's a very important that the private sector and the government and who support each work together and we are working closely with the World Bank to create the right regulatory environment or framework for instance the meter storage system which can help the grid on customers reduce demand charges and also possibly supply electric back into the grid when required for various purposes. Um, but when we get to the transmission and distribution, um, in countries with low electrification, uh, right, solar plus storage, microgrids can leapfrog the conventional path of energy development by taking an, an entire site of grid, e.g. home company, uh, as campuses or mine or industry that we in the mining space is, 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 is very much looking at. But microgrids can also work in conjunction with the grid itself by increasing reliability and power quality if such an industrial park can switch to island mode during blackouts. This increases the competitiveness of business contributing to job creation. The IFC has made VC investments in microgrid companies before. IFC is engaging with the World Bank to provide, again, policy level interventions and advise your approaches to support the development of the necessary policy frameworks to enable market development, PPP, microgrid, concessions, so forth. Some of these things have already been done in, in certain countries, uh, namely Nigeria. There is work being done uh, for microgrids and uh, to sort of turn these grids into smart grids. So while the energy sector has experienced some digitalization in the past, the current wave of this digitalization is being enabled by the past. Um, it is enabled by the wireless connectivity and internet. So the demand for digitalization is also driven by intermittent renewable energy sources. So I've only got five minutes and I've not even gone to what we've done. But anyway, so um, we as IFC is also working on, on smart grids uh, mostly with, uh, with uh, PE firms and, and trying to see how we can finance some of those disruptive uh, technologies. Um, flexible demand, not to go much into that, again with electrical vehicles and when you're going to utilize it and net metering and systems of that place, you can also look at, uh, at uh, looking at your demand and supply. Um, very important, flexible business models. Uh, uh, this is one of the things that is really disruptive. Uh, I think um, with lower spot prices and deregulated markets, off-takers of power are less uh, willing to sign long-term uh, power purchase agreements of 20 years. How are you going to do that? Uh, what aggregators should you get in? Is there ways of, of, of looking at a difference with a rollover, with, with, with uh, aggregators in between? Um, uh, the fact that a lot of the state uh, distribution company uh, is, is signing some of the PPAs is, is not sustainable uh, with, with their balance sheets. So there's new models of looking at financing these projects that, that is needed uh, to make it uh, work at the end of the day. Um, 
So the, the next slide was really to talk about some of the disruptive technologies that the IFC has been involved in. And you know, this is the, the juicy stuff, but I will provide it to you where I just listed all of the, the projects that we were involved in uh, regarding wind, energy, utility scale deployment of solar, PVs, uh, financing of distributed power generations in, in, in Asia and in Tanzania, uh, what we have done with PE funds, uh, we've invested about 300 million with them to try and look at smaller renewable and clean tech projects. So today, um, just to, to summarize that, and I'll, I'll send you the, 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 the examples, because that, those examples are, are sometimes important to be able to see what we can implement in Africa or in South Africa or other places to be able to do. Uh, but our, our business is uh, uh, in, 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 in renewable energy. Um, quickly, maybe because of the time, just talk about some of the lessons. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, write downs because of the first mover disadvantage we've had uh, with uh, projects and the costs that are coming down uh, through new renewables. Um, we, the hurdles of, of, of funding a lot of these projects is that uh, foreign investors um, uh, are, doesn't know the territory, is not prepared to, to necessarily spend capital uh, and utilize their technical expertise uh, and because they don't know the market, they don't know the players in the market. Uh, and, uh, and I think we as IFC can play a very important role as an international development institution to get the right kind of partners with people together and broker uh, and be a kind of honest broker to try and, 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 and make those things happen. Um, obviously, uncontrollable growth uh, in the renewable space um, has led to oversupply, um, has also led to uh, curtailment, um, things of th that nature we have to uh, avoid and, and work together. Um, the quality of our distribution network work, transmission and distribution investments, they say there's about three million trillion, three trillion dollars needed for transmission and distribution investments uh, up to 2025 of which 67% of that three trillion is needed in emerging markets. It's quite high numbers. And this is to be able to make uh, power available uh, to people. It's quite scary. Um, so my last slide um, was really, and I'm sorry I couldn't go through anything, uh, that it seems daunting and it seems very difficult and Shouldn't we just go back to coal? No. <coughs> this is an industry that has so many opportunities for growth, so many private sector uh, 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 ways of doing things, new innovative ways of doing things, uh, working with governments to try and make power available to people, yes. So I think we must all work together please come and see us at IFC. I'll really introduce you to the right guys that can give you all of the background and understanding, tell you what we've done, and see if we can do things more together. Uh, we think distributed generation, especially for commercial and industrial clients, uh, is something that we can do quickly. Um, LNG, the power of, of, of uh, floating base load, that's something we, we're working very hard in South Africa and other places development of a smart grid, the software and the hardware, and the financing for it, and then with the World Bank and ourselves to focus more on transmission and distribution as it will, will obviously uh, unlock uh, more opportunities. Mm -hmm.